Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline from Pixie Dust PhD. In today's video, we're going to be trying to recreate one of my absolute favorite snacks from Walt Disney World. That's that beautiful bacon cheese roll from La Halle in Epcot. I don't speak any French, but the official name is something along the lines of Roulard et Fromage. Stay tuned to this video to see my attempt to recreate this bacon cheese roll from France and Epcot. The closest thing I could find to a recipe was this post on Reddit where someone was asking if anyone knew how to make it, and someone responded that they got back from Disney the recipe for the Rule à Fromage Bacon Cheese Rolls. It has 1,000 grams of bread dough, 150 grams of bechamel sauce, 100 grams of chopped cooked bacon, and 80 grams of shredded Swiss cheese. If you notice though, that's pretty vague. For example, 1,000 grams of bread dough. So you have to decide what kind of bread dough to make. I went with this basic pull apart bread dough from Bakescratch.com. I am not a bread expert at all, but this seems like a good place to start. To begin making our bread, we will start with the yeast ingredients. So here we have one third a cup of warm milk. You'll want it to be roughly 105 to 110 degrees, six grams of sugar and four grams of yeast. First, we'll measure out our milk and then pop that in the microwave in order to warm it up a bit. You don't want it to be too hot. For example, if your milk is steaming, it's probably a little too hot and you'll need to wait for it to cool down. Once you've reached the desired temperature, go ahead and add your sugar. Stir to combine. Then I like to retake the temperature to ensure we're still in that range. If you don't have a thermometer, it should feel warm to the touch, but not hot. Next, we'll go ahead and add our yeast. Stir to combine to ensure that all of the yeast have access to that sugary milk mixture. And then we will set this aside to let the yeast froth. It'll take about 10 to 15 minutes. In the meantime, let's get started on the rest of the bread. You'll need one egg, one half teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a cup of butter melted, that's around 28 or 29 grams, and one and five eighths cup of flour, that's around 203 grams. First, we'll weigh out our flour, and I like to sift it as well. Next, we are weighing out the butter. Subsequently, we will go ahead and put that in the microwave until it's melted. Next, we'll crack open our egg. Finally, we'll add a little bit of salt to the flour, and then go ahead and stir to combine. So we are now ready with all of our bread ingredients. In this time, you can see the yeast has gotten rather frothy. So we know the yeast is very active and alive. If you have a sand mixer, now's the time to get it. Add a little bit of flour to the yeast mixture and mix just until combined. Then go ahead and add the butter as well as some more flour. Once that's combined, add in your egg and then some more flour. Mix to combine and scrape down the bowl occasionally. And finally finish with flour. Once you're at your last flour step, I like to switch to the bread hook. This will form a soft dough. I wasn't necessarily looking for it to pass the window pane test, but I did want there to be enough gluten development for it not to rip easily. Once you're satisfied with the texture, boil up a bowl and then add your dough to that bowl. Be sure to roll your dough around in the oil to ensure that it won't dry out. Then cover with the damp towel and set aside. Next, we'll move on to our bacon. We are going to need about 50 grams. You can cook the bacon however you want. I have elected to go ahead and take four strips, cut them in half, and then cook them in a cast iron pan. If memory serves correctly, the bacon you get in the roll from Epcot is a little bit on the chewy side. I, however, prefer my bacon quite crispy, so I'm going to cook this until it's rather crisp. Drain the extra grease off on a paper towel and then chop up your bacon. This is not included in the Epcot version, but my partner and I both really enjoy garlic. 
We roasted a head of garlic and now have extracted the individual cloves. Next is the bechamel sauce. To start, you'll need 3 8 a cup of milk, which is about 92 grams. And then you will need 1 half tablespoon of butter. And you'll want an equal amount of flour. So that would be 1 half tablespoon. In this case, I'm just doing 1 and 1 half teaspoons. Melt the butter in a saucepan, and once fully melted, you will go ahead and add your flour. Stir to combine, and be sure to be stirring constantly during this step. You want the flour to cook, and you will be stirring until basically a paste forms. It'll smell nutty and pleasant instead of like uncooked flour. This takes around two minutes most of the time. Once your flour is cooked, you will go ahead and add your warmed milk. I usually add it in a couple of batches. And then you'll just stir consistently until you reach the desired thickness. In this case, I'm looking to be able to coat the back of a spoon. You do want to be stirring constantly to ensure that you won't get any burnt flour on the bottom of your pan. So you can see here when you dip the spoon in the bechamel sauce and wipe a little away, it stays clean. So this is the perfect consistency. It's been about an hour and our dough has doubled in size. The original recipe calls for 1,000 grams of dough, but I knew intentionally I wanted to make less than that since it's just myself and my partner. So I've weighed my dough here and it's around 350 grams of dough, so I'm adjusting the entire recipe accordingly. Here I have a silicon mat that I would use to bake cookies on. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and grease it with some olive oil and then roll out my dough on the mat. You want to roll the bread dough out into a rectangular shape approximately one inch thick. Here I am mashing up that roasted garlic and spreading it all over the dough. Again, this is optional and not included in the version of Epcot to my knowledge. Next, we pour the bechamel onto our dough. Spread it out to coat evenly with an offset spatula. Here we have our bacon. I am placing it slash sprinkling it to try to get roughly even coverage across the entire dough. I ended up being a tiny bit short on bacon, so if you decide to do this recipe, make more bacon than you think you might need. The worst case scenario is you have extra bacon left over. That's never a problem. And finally, we will go ahead and add our shredded cheese. Sprinkle evenly across the bread dough. And that's all of the ingredients for your rolls. Now it's time to roll. You'll want to try to roll tightly, but don't stretch the dough out too much. And here is your finished bread roll log. Slice into pieces roughly one and one half inches thick. Prepare a sheet pan by lining with parchment and I also like to grease the parchment with some olive oil. Move your rolls onto the prepared sheet pan. If you have any loose roll ends, be sure to pinch the dough and tuck them in. Take a piece of saran wrap and oil one side. Put the oiled side down over your rolls. We are going to let these proof for about an hour. hour at room temperature, you can see how much larger the rolls now are. I am just going back through and re-pinching any loose ends to make sure they don't come open during baking. 
Then grease the tops with olive oil and you can sprinkle with a flaky salt like Malden. Bake for 10 to 15 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is what your final product looks like. They're beautiful and golden on top as well as on the bottom. The sides could certainly use some more color. They break apart very well and you can see those layers of bechamel, cheese, and bacon, and in my case, garlic throughout. Overall, I thought that they tasted really good. The bechamel sauce added a lot and I never would have thought to add that to a roll, but that is absolutely correct when thinking about what the roll from Epcot tastes like. The bread dough I have chosen here though, I think is probably not quite correct. If memory serves me correctly, I believe the roll in Les Halls is a little bit more buttery than this one. When considering what kind of bread dough to make for the recipe, I thought about something like a brioche, which is super buttery, but I thought that might be too buttery. The roll from Epcot also definitely isn't a croissant, so I didn't want to make anything too laminated. However, I don't think this is laminated enough, and there's probably some bread dough in the middle of a standard dinner roll pull-apart dough and a croissant dough that would be much better. But overall, this was a fun and fairly simple project. The taste was not an exact replica of the Epcot roll, but it definitely satisfied my craving. I ate three of these rolls for lunch and it was absolutely delicious. If you are a bread expert and can tell from this photo what kind of bread dough you think it is, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to improve this recipe. And if any of you know of a Disney dupe recipe for this roll from Epcot, let me know where you found it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell icon for notifications whenever I post new videos. And thanks to all my returning viewers and subscribers, your support really does mean so much to me. If you want to chat, leave a comment down below, or you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at PixieDustPhD. I hope the rest of your day is totally scrumptious, and we'll see you real soon at PixieDustPhD.